Hey guys, welcome back to the Ramsey Custom Shop. This is Gary, and uh, we're picking back up on part two of the Jeep video. This is a 1959 Willys Jeep that belongs to my neighbor down the street. Um, and on this video, we're putting the roll cage in. So here, getting started, the very first thing I did was uh, take the mounting plates that go for the front hoop and get those located, spend a little time off camera, making sure they're, you know, in the same position side to side um, and then go ahead and get the holes drilled through and bolted down so that they're in the right position and then uh, then after that we'll get the, the the right side or the driver side of the hoop left side uh, set up and just kind of do a little fit up and then off camera I tacked that in place and got the rest of everything in place uh, for the other side and All right, guys, I'm going to show you the progress. I've been trying to film a little bit as I go. I haven't been getting a lot of it because it's just, it's so time consuming and slow, each one of the parts. I mean, I might have the camera running for an hour just to get one thing fitted up because it's going really slow. But I just thought I'd show you this. I was getting ready to, uh, you know, uh, put the, the rear hoops in, and this is the plate that they sent. And uh, it didn't quite fit in this corner down here, so I just, you know, radius that. Um, and the reason it didn't fit was it doesn't go there. It actually needs to, uh, it needs to fit on this inner one to get lined up with the front hoop there. Plus, if you put it in here, once you put both sides in and welded it, you couldn't get it out because there's a lip right there. So I just ended up remaking them because, uh, one, I put this radius there and I could have just matched that radius and, you know, it'd probably been fine. But it doesn't fit down in this uh, little channel here. It, it's, you know, it won't slide down in there. So it would either be cocked on an angle, or there'd be an air gap between it, and that would collect water, or, you know, who, uh, whatever. So I didn't show uh, cutting this, but I just sketched up another one real quick and made it slightly narrower, and had it plasma cut my holes in it. And you see that one fits down in there like it should. So uh, that's where we're at. <clears throat> we're gonna get those uh, holes drilled and bolted in. And then we'll get our main hoops, two rear main hoops that you see in the background over there. We've been doing some cutting and trimming on those. Let me show you that real quick. So the center to center distance from here to here is 46 and, a, uh, 46 and 5 eighths. And uh, when, when these are shipped, they're universal, made to go on several different Jeeps. So I had to take a bunch of material out of the middle on both sides. So they give you, <clears throat> I was just over here cleaning these up. They give you these sleeves. And those go, uh, those go ID OD on the inside of the tubes and, and join in there. Um, so I've, I'm guessing that what should be done, there's no instructions with this, but you should drill a hole on either side and plug weld that, that tube on each side. But I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. I'll probably just, uh, put a tack on it, you know, on one side so that it stays in place and then slide the other one in. So let me try to, uh, bring you along on some of this. All right, so here just uh, doing a final fit up on this and uh, wanted to, uh, you know, the mill scale on all this, if you're going to TIG weld it, it really makes a pretty big difference in uh, the quality of the weld. So I removed all the mill scale around the, uh, uh, you know, the joints on all these. So um, what I was doing in all cases was uh, using the MIG to get everything tacked. Uh, it's just a lot easier to kind of, you know, hold things up and squeeze a trigger with one hand versus, you know, trying to have two hands in place and there are your gaps perfectly good and all that. We have decent gaps on almost everything, uh, but not uh, not perfect gaps, you know. In some cases, we had uh, some, some minor little gaps to deal with. So the, the MIG worked out better for, you know, just laying it out, making sure we had the right measurements and so forth. So now that I had it, um, now that I had it uh, tacked up, just getting set up over here with the TIG, and uh, you can see the TIG is just, you know, a lot slower. Just, I'm really fidgety about the TIG, you know, getting it in my hand right and adjusting the tungsten, sharpening the tungsten, getting positioned. It's just a little more Then Can you see me rotate my right hand around on the tube there? That's something I've not really done a lot of tubing. 
and you know is is a skill that over time I think I you know would like to to be able to do more of, which is uh, roll my hand around the tube and not just scoop forward. So there I was just trying uh, pulse. So I uh, experimented with a few different uh, settings on the welder. This is the very first part of it that I TIG welded up and then got a few things dialed in from there. All right, so we got those uh, hoops welded there that you saw working on. So uh, the good thing about welding those first is all the <clears throat> movement is, is out of them now that they're, um, you know, they're settled in. But anyway, I was going to show you this. Uh, you see this bar here has got a little kick up on it and uh, because the back of this is higher than the, the front. The front seats sit lower than the back, so to get the same headroom, you gotta have that little jog up there. So I use my little uh, angle finder there to get a, it's probably gonna move when I touch this to, to turn it on. Uh, it's not coming on. Anyway, so I uh, set a reference here on the, um, on the cowl, that's the flattest reference surface I could find. And then I'm using this uh, one, two, three, or two, four, six block there clamped to a drywall square to give myself an adjustable uh, tube holder because this tube here has to be cut to a certain length and then notched on the end. And then that's got to intersect the, uh, the hoops that go back here that we just welded up. And those have to be cut as well. So a lot of like, you know, fidgety figuring around uh, but I think we got it now in a way to get some measurements that we can make some cuts and get it to fit up pretty good. All right. So the, the two main hoops have been measured. The, the main rear hoops, I should say, have been measured and, uh, fit together, joined together in the center and welded. And then once I got those welded, I brought them over to the bandsaw. And because the, the hoops were big enough, you know, I could cut them to length and I set up a little stop block that you'll see in a second so that I could cut both legs off of each hoop, um, which would be a total of four and get them exactly to the right length. Really good use for this uh, sort of flat welding table square that's meant to go on those tables. I got four or five of these and I welded one together and I really had it on the table for a while and rarely ever used it, but this is pretty cool. It, it's uh, a way to you know catch this bolt hole otherwise there's no other kind of square you can even like the fireball tool square there's not a good way to hold it down you know to to this part you know i guess you could put a maybe some kind of a big clamp on there but again just uh the initial fit up on the hoop here and using the mig to get some tacks and i was getting tacks on uh you know four tacks basically on each on each hoop and um, get the welder a little closer so I could move to the other side there. And I'll get four tacks on this side and then put the other hoop in and repeat that process. And then what I didn't show off camera was I pulled the entire assembly off and took it over on some sawhorses that are made out of steel and put them down lower on the ground so I could get to the inside of them easier and get my chair over there so I could TIG weld them all up. All right, burned in some hot tacks there. I got the welder all the way up, just a you know, quarter inch plate. This welder is rated for three eighths. And uh, so I got the wire speed down a little bit just to burn in some hot tacks. I was having a little bit of a problem a couple times with some uh, slow, you know, popping, stuttering starts. So uh, I got the ground closer to the work and hotter welder so there you go all right so got the two rear hoops in they uh looking pretty good so far we'll see here in a little bit with this one part i've got to fit in there so we got this crossbar that goes in and again like i said this kit um you know it's kind of a universal thing they they notch one end of it and then leave you length and you're supposed to cut and notch the other end so that's going to go something like that. But I'm going to hold off for now. The owner lives just down the street from me. When he gets off work today, I'm going to let him come by, see exactly where he wants this. Because he's got some accessories and different things he wants to mount on it. And he's going to use some of these tubes for that. Now, I'm, I'm guessing that this needs to go in a certain location to add strength, you know, and you can't get too far out of whack with that. 
but I don't think we're going for any kind of certification, rock crawling, whatever. This is just mostly to be able to add a canopy, uh, canvas top and some uh, radio and accessories up in the top right here and things like that. All right, so uh, what I'm doing is uh, notching the other end of this tube and I'm using my um, digital level to, you know, set a reference and then keep it 90 degrees to that so that the the notches are parallel to each other. What I didn't show off camera, I guess I missed the footage, was was actually uh, drilling the notch. And I just use a hole saw in the milling machine. And then here I'm using the belt grinder to do the cleanup on the, on the tube. And just a quick test fit to see if it's going to uh, fit in place. And we got the right length on that. So, and we did, it fits. And then what you're seeing now is the, um, is the main lower mount that goes uh, between the front hoops at, you know, I guess basically the dash bar. So at the dash level, um, and that came in two pieces as well. It was notched on both ends and each end was too long. So I just, you know, got the right measurement and made sure that the cut was in the center so that, you know, we had a center uh, line up on that and then take it over the bench. And again, I'm going to be TIG welding this and you'll notice there's a lot of, you know, fidgeting around and trying to get everything set, uh, getting the welder set. But what I just did was inserted that little uh, coupler sleeve and tacked it so that it wouldn't move. And then um, now I'm just getting tacks all the way around it using the, you know, the, the table here to, to kind of keep it flat. And then I just um, eyeballed that with the square edge to, to make sure it was straight. And then, uh, and then here, just getting it fully welded in. And again, you know, uh, I could only go about uh, maybe 90 degrees at a time without, a, you know, rotating and adjusting. I know some guys can go further around uh, with the TIG just by rotating their wrist and arm and all that while also dabbing and so forth. Definitely an area I need to work on. I just, I really have not done that much tubing or pipe or anything to get the feel for that. But it worked out fine. And again, taking that over to get a test fit. And as you'll see, it slides into place and uh, the gap was a little bit bigger than I wanted. That should not be sliding in there so loosely like that. Uh, and I did have gaps on each end, uh, maybe an eighth of an inch or so. And I double pass welded that. Uh, went around it, welded up the gap, and then wire brushed and ground some areas. And then, uh, you know, and then uh, put another pass on it. I had a couple of different areas that I had to do that on where the gaps were just too much. I think one or two of them I went around with the MIG and then uh, ground that down and, you know, and, and wire brushed it and then came back with the TIG once, once the weld was complete and put a nice weld. So again, got the TIG welder over, you know, uh, near the, the roll-up door area, which is, I'm really not usually set up all my stuff's over there near the benches, but um, I enjoyed welding this. I, you know, there was uh, some out of position welding, a lot of stuff I don't really like to do or choose to do on a regular basis. And it was, it was fun and challenging, welding overhead, welding underneath, just again, something I don't really ever do. Um, and you know, got better at it as I, as I went along, and I'm sure if I had more practice at it, I'd, I'd get even better. But overall, the welds, I was really happy with those, and I think uh, here at the end of the video, there's a little recap, and uh, you'll see a few shots of the welds close up. But this, was, this will be a good one where, you know, one of those 6061.com has that, uh, TIG button that you can buy that's that's variable so you can how much pressure you're putting on the button with your finger varies how much amperage you have would have been perfect for this but you can see me 
scooting the foot pedal around and trying to get, you know, in a spot. And here I'm having to stop and go grind the tungsten. Uh, keeping a sharp tungsten, I think, is really important. And it is time consuming to always sharpen it, but I like to have it, even if it's just, even if you never touch down and you've just gotten it contaminated a little bit from welding with it, it's just, I like to have it sharp because you can really pinpoint the arc and you'll just end up with a lot better weld by doing that. But uh, lots of fidgeting around, you know, got to take the glove off to get the tungsten in and all that. So. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap up the video. I just wanted to uh, show you some details on this. Now, uh, this uh, Jeep is, uh, I'm actually at my buddy Kenny's house who's down the road from me. So, um, uh, it's all finished up and I, what I didn't show in the video was just the final, you know, look and clearance of it. Obviously he's got it sitting outside. Uh, his plan I think is to have the whole inside of this thing, uh, rhino lined. So he wasn't really too worried about, you know, the detail and the final fit up and, or the, the actual prepping of the welds and all that. He came and looked at it and said, Hey, it looks good to me. Just let's uh, get it going. So, um, anyway, you can see that extra four inches of clearance there on getting that seat slid uh, further back. Uh, I didn't show this on camera, but I made this bracket to relocate the seat. It used to be, this uh, mounting point used to be up here and it had a little hook bracket off of that. So this is some quarter inch angle iron that I just sort of cut and drilled some holes and got that. And then the other other side, the uh, there's a bolt there that I, uh, I drilled a hole. There was where it was. And I got lucky back here on the back one. There was this eye bolt thing here, and then there was another one right there. Two of them, I'm not sure what those are for, but that hole was in the perfect spot. So I just removed it and put the bolt through that hole. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Here's the final look of everything. One of the things I didn't show off camera are these molly panels that uh, I sketched up and cut out of some eighth inch plate and uh, welded those on for him. And uh, a lot of you guys probably know what the molly panels are, but those are uh, military style panels that you can, um, you know, mount various kinds of things on. So um, anyway, guys, that's it. There's a final look of it. It turned out good. The customer, Kenny, was happy and another project finished. So. Thanks, guys. See you on the next video.